hard work pays off. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, work ethic outweighs talent nine times out of 10. If you get out there and you just, we have guys that come in that, you know, they, they can't feel, they can't learn the script fully. You know, they, they struggle with that kind of stuff. And I'll tell them, just go out there and make a friend, you know, and they'll go out there and set like six or eight appointments when they go and make a friend, you know? So ultimately, you know, don't, don't make this job as hard, like super hard. Uh, just go out there and, you know, find the joy in it. And then you're go- you'll be successful. If you can find, find the joy in it, you know? Welcome everybody out to the D2D podcast. I'm your host, Roz. We got another Golden Door deep dive session here. We got Garrett Cotton all the way from Denver, Colorado. Uh, Der- Garrett's joining us via Zoom today. Uh, unfortunately, he's not out in Utah at the moment, but Garrett, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, yeah. Just loving all these new opportunities that have been coming through, especially through Door to Door, yeah. Amazing. Garrett, this is your first Golden Door of that, right? Yeah, first golden door. Actually, my first door ever knocked was August 9th of last year. So I've been learning a lot. Are you serious? You've only been in the industry for a year and change? Yeah, my first door ever knocked was on August 9th of last year. So a lot has happened in the last year for sure. Wow. Okay. That honestly, yeah, that gives us a lot to go off of, my man. Um, so Garrett, uh, walk me through then. Let's Let's just dive right in. How'd you get into the industry then? Yeah, so I'm actually from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, down there in the south, we don't have too much door-to-door sales. Uh, I've never heard of it prior to uh, coming and doing window sales. Well, uh, I actually had a cousin of mine who uh, got married into a-, a guy who she had met when she was in college in San Diego, and he t- found the job off of Indeed. And he started off his first two months and he made really good money those first two months. And he uh, called me to kind of start building his team. And he was like, Garrett, I started doing uh, this job and, you know, uh, I I made really good money my first two months. And I was just thinking about who would be good. And he called me and I didn't really ask many questions. At the time, I was bartending tables at Chili's. I'm sure you've been to a Chili's before. Of course. uh, Yep. Who hasn't? So I was at Chili's and I mean, I was getting by nothing too, too great. And then this opportunity came up and I was on a plane uh, two weeks later and to go try the job out. Uh, Didn't have a script down or anything like that. Just kind of went out there to go try the job out. And in that first first week, I kind of got the hang of things. I didn't come in and I wasn't successful, like all right off the jump, but I just stuck it out and saw that people around me were making (laughs) crazy money. And I was like, if these guys can do it, I just got to figure it out and I can do it too. And um, so that's one thing led to another after it took me six months to qualify as a closer. And then after that, I just rocked and rolled. It's just been tunnel vision ever since then, I feel like. So it's been been a journey. That's amazing, man. Well, congratulations on on the Golden Door. Uh, Congratulations for, um, you know, just really uh, full commitment. And that's what we've been seeing a lot of very common trends is of these Golden Door winners is that they have two feet on the ground. Like you said, tunnel vision, they have their purpose. We know what we're doing. So um, let's rewind the clock back. August 9th, 2022. What was your first day on the doors like? I actually did really, really good. Uh, I went out there and I had set six appointments my first day out there and um, really had no clue what I was doing. Of course, none of them closed. I want to say that I had 18 appointments run before one actually closed. And that's that's like crazy. Our ratios over here is like every every six appointments you should see a, see a close. And for 18 to run it just ultimately i was going out there and building a lot of trust but i was nowhere near (laughs) saying the words that i needed to say so i was setting appointments and making friends out there and it took me a while to kind of fine tune and figure out how to find quality appointments yeah what did that look like for you how did how were you able to um create a better set for your closers yeah, I, I got to give it to the training at, uh, with Performance Windows. I came in and uh, Levi Henry is actually, he was leading the, the meetings whenever I got to the office. So I think all the top producers at the time were 
in Hawaii on a company trip. And my first week in there, Levi was filling in in the office, running the appointment, I mean, running the meeting. And so it was some really, really, really good um, uh, uh, trainings as far as like going over the quality of appointments and uh, the four things to make sure that it's uh, it's it's quality. And um, just having that hands-on training with Levi, I think it really, really helped me. But ultimately, I just saw the vision and persistence through failure is success, you know, and I've all, I just, those, those little sayings like that, it just kind of would keep me going and keep on striving. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of the times, yeah, we'll, we'll get out the gates running, but the quality of our work isn't quite um, where it needs to be. We focus too much on, on getting those big numbers on knocking, you know, 200 doors for the day or whatever it might be when really sometimes, you know, we need to focus on the quality and, um, or yeah, yeah, the, the quantity and on the quality as well. So really make sure that um, we're getting dialed in on that. So you had a great mentor. Yeah, uh, they, they pulled you aside. They said, hey man, like this is what we could do to help you out. This is where we, we could get you fixed up. At, at what point then, when the ball started to get rolling, were you like, I'm going to go for that Golden Door Award? Uh, to be honest, the Golden Door was never really like a, in my vision. I just kind of, I, I just, when I left home, uh, leaving Louisiana, I kind of told myself that there's no option of going back. So I just got to figure this stuff out. You know, uh, my cousin, when he called me and said, told me how much some of these guys were making in the office, I just, I was like, there's no way, you know, I, I've got to see it for myself. And then when I got over here and got to talk to those guys and see how they were doing it, ultimately, I just I, like as far as Golden Door goes, that was just like a byproduct of just the determination that I had. So it's just kind of like I just trusted in the process and was coming here to work. And I really and truly just wanted to change my life and uh, change the life of the people around me. And I just put my head down and worked. And then uh, the Golden Door just came along with it. it it's really crazy because I keep telling people that it's I really, I don't remember the last, like the six, last six months of, you know, just selling, just, it's a blur, you know, just, you, I've closed my eyes and I've opened them and, and now here I am. That's awesome. What's crazy too, um, I had Jake Richards on the podcast, also from Performance Windows. He said the exact same thing. He's like, honestly, like Levi hit me up. He told me, Hey, I hit a golden door and I didn't even realize it. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> like, know much. Oh, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I'm kind of surprised at the time. So definitely, definitely excited for it. Yeah. What is it? Uh, how does someone get to that point where they can just, um, they're just so dialed in on what they're doing that the results don't matter? Yeah. For me, I feel like you've got to be willing <laughs> sacrifice. You have to truly understand sacrifice you know you have to be willing to if you're willing to give up anything then you can achieve everything you know so like that's one thing is like you have to you have to make changes in your life if you want to see changes in your life you know for me i used to never work out in the mornings i used to never eat healthy i used to you know sleep late all the time but when i, I moved across the country I said, I'm moving across the country and if I want to see my life change, then I have to live differently, you know? And so that was like one of the big things is like I, I started working out. I started doing the things that you hear about on, on the podcast and stuff. You know, you hear about people's their lives outside of work. Uh, I keep saying if, if I make my life hard, then work becomes easy. And that's why I've been trying to put more into having a good a good quality of life, a great routine, uh, super great consistency. And I believe by finding that is what's helped me to achieve a golden door. I've just had such great routine. Like I, I eat breakfast, I take a cold shower in the morning, I work out, stuff that I never did growing up. But until I came out here and made those changes in my life, then I've started seeing results in my life, you know? Yeah, that, that, that's incredible. Um, can you walk us through what your daily routine looks like specifically? Like what time you're waking up? Like, yeah, everything. So 5 a.m. work, wake up uh, every single day. I work out about 22 minutes away from my house. So I wake up, get the pre-workout ready. I'll go and I'll, I've started doing CrossFit. Uh, CrossFit, I've never worked out like any, like, uh, like crazy workouts before. So I got into CrossFit just because that's what my cousin who recruited me Hey, that's one of the big things that he was into. So I started with CrossFit and I love it just because 
all around, you feel better as a person. I can do like handstand push-ups now, like stuff that I never have been able to do before. So um, I'll go do a CrossFit workout at 6 a.m. is what time I'll get to the gym. Uh, I usually work out for an hour. I'll go back home, uh, shower, uh, make me some greens every single morning. Oh, in my shower, every single shower, I'd always, I mean, like in the morning, I always do a cold shower in the morning. I like to tell myself that I like to shock myself so that I'm, I'm prepared for the day. You know, nobody's ever going to catch me on guard because I'm, I, I started my day uncomfortable, you know. And so uh, I'll take my cold shower. I'll get my greens and my, uh, and my coffee and get me a good breakfast. And I'm usually up to the office about 30 minutes early. Uh, I just like to get there early because just to be ahead of the ahead of the curve, you know. I've always kind of looked at it as like I'm not competing with the people in the office. I'm competing with the best in the company. So if I if I act like the people in the office, I'll never be the best in the company. You know, I've got it kind of like that Mamba mentality. I watch a lot of those motivational videos. <laughs> yeah. But after that, the, to hood and I'll kind of catch my doors knocked. We usually get out there around like 1030 out here. And I'm not sure about like other industries and how they do their knocking, but we usually knock like two hours in the morning and three in the evening uh, for me. I always like to get at least one extra hour just to put myself ahead of the curve, that kind of stuff. Just ultimately, it's not about being a better door knocker. It's about getting more opportunity. So it's all about how many doors you can knock. If you want to be the best, you just got to put yourself out there more than others. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a big thing, recurring theme we're seeing with a lot of these Golden Door winners. It's like, yeah, they're the first ones on the doors. They're the last ones to leave. Um, just anything to give you an extra edge. And it's it's really powerful, honestly. It's it's incredible to see, um, you know, just the compound effect of it. You know, thirty extra thirty minutes every day that adds up into hours, that adds up into days, um, yeah. hun hundreds of thousands of doors. Yeah, we have like a flex day usually, and uh, so like that'll be like our, our off day. And for me, I moved across the country to come do door to door sales. So uh, I told myself. I can relax and hang out at home, you know, like I can go go to Top Golf back at home, you know, like for me, I take this sixth day is I work uh, usually a half day every single day when everybody else takes an off day. And mm. for me, uh, at the end of my mind, it is still an off day. I, got, I didn't do it as hard as I usually do, but I'm still working and giving myself more opportunity than everybody else. For sure. And I, one thing about you, Garrett, that I think is is really unique among a lot of people is I, I i think just your initial leap of faith that commitment early on uh, being willing to move across the country being willing to do all these things what was it that gave you that faith to jump like that yeah it's kind of i guess it's pretty crazy because i graduated college or actually i didn't even graduate i was like in my last semester and i was going to school for health systems management and uh, my mom, she owns a hospice company in, in Louisiana, and it's a really successful hospice company doing great. And my goal was to get that degree and go into her wing and kind of just learn the learn the ropes, you know, and kind of let her show me the way. But as I was in my last semester of college, I went and started uh, started working for her a little bit early, just kind of getting some hours in here or there. And I realized that I don't want to spend my whole life in hospice, you know, so Ultimately, I was like, I'm wasting my degree. I'm wasting my time. I kind of got my back up against the wall. I have no other options. And then I went back to serving tables because I actually made more money serving tables on no degree than working a full time job uh, in hospice with a degree. So ultimately, I was like, I'm just going to figure out whatever's coming for me. And then about four months go by. And then that's whenever this opportunity came up and I just kind of, I was looking for an opportunity. I, I feel like I've waited for one my whole life just for the right opportunity. And when, when I heard about this, I, there, I've never heard anything like it. So I've always kind of been the type where, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed to say that I've got family to fall back on. But I was at the point in my life where I'm ready to flip the roles. I'm ready for my family to fall back on me, you know. So I'm, I, I've never been scared to take a risk because I know I can always fall back. But going over here i wasn't going to accept failure because I, I i can't move across the country and go back with nothing you know they, that's not an option so absolutely um yeah that's that's absolutely inspiring i mean it also just goes to show it's like 
if you have one foot in but one foot out you're just you're imbalanced you're gonna fall two feet planted yeah i've actually been able to grow my team here in denver uh pretty pretty substantially i think i've gotten of, of my team i've recruited there's about eight guys that i've gotten from louisiana all have moved across the country uh they so it's kind of crazy how i do it so I, I, I rented a, a townhouse purposely with an extra bedroom so that somebody can come and stay with me. I call it my recruit room. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll recruit to come and stay with me. And it's like a friend from college or a friend from high school. And they stay with me for two months. Well, I give them two months. And of that two months, they usually stay about a month and a half. But in that two month and a half time, they, they learn my routine. I get them on my routine of basically changing their life outside of work because if you can change your life then you can start seeing change in work and so i'll get them on my routine to where they'll i'll pay for their gym membership I will, i'll bring them to the gym every morning i'll pay for their food while they're at my house you know like literally give them they don't pay for rent but i bring them and take them under my wing and i show them how and then while they're in my house I'm about a, a month will get into it and I'll, I'll put a deadline i'll be like all right so have you started looking for your apartment have you started like Find it, figure out what's the date that you're leaving and getting your own place, moving out here. And ultimately at that point, it's kind of, it starts to get real uncomfortable for them. And when they start getting uncomfortable is when they start to succeed because they'll kind of, they'll come in and they'll, they think it's like, you're going to be this easy job. And then they kind of treat it like a job and they'll go and work their hours and stuff like that. But whenever they start to get their back against the wall and they're like, oh, my time's running out. I, I've got to figure out a place to live. You know, that's whenever I see them buy in, kind of like the same way that I had it. When I went to Utah to try this job, I lived with my cousin for a month and a half. And over that month and a half, he had a newborn baby, you know, like it was, it was definitely, I was ready to get out of there, you know? So it just motivated me to work harder, faster, so that I could get on my own, plant my seeds and then start to grow. But like you said, it's, it's that 100% commitment. If you, if you come into this with, with the slightest hesitation of like, oh, well, I could always go back, you probably won't do that great. But if you can come into it and say, like, I'm going to figure this out, you can figure this. Anybody can do this job. It's only as hard as you make it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Garrett, we're super excited to have you at DDD Con. Is this going to be your first DDD Con? Yeah, first time. Dang. That's going to be amazing, man. And first, not only first time at DDDCon, but first time at DDDCon, and you're going to be on stage winning a Golden Door Award. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And then all my guys from Louisiana, uh, I'm going to be bringing them out there too. And uh, we're all going to be present and stuff like that. So I'm going to be bringing a little bit of a presence too. Hell yeah, my man. That's amazing. Well, Garrett, um, just before we, we let you go, uh, what other tips or advice could you give to maybe a prospective listener who's, you know, they've been wanting a golden door, maybe they've been putting it off, or um, just what advice would you give to that prospective golden door person that wants to get it? For me, I would say that um, hard work pays off. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, work ethic outweighs talent nine times out of 10. If you get out there and you just, we have guys that come in that, you know, they, they can't, they can't learn the script fully. You know, they, they struggle with that kind of stuff. And I'll tell them, just go out there and make a friend, you know, and they'll go out there and set like six or eight appointments when they go and make a friend, you know? So ultimately, you know, don't, don't make this job as hard, like super hard. Uh, just go out there and, you know, find the joy in it. And then you're, you'll be successful. If you can, find find the joy in it you know if you learn to love what you're doing for me it's kind of <laughs> i always tell people i like brainwash myself on the door because i'm walking up to the door singing songs and comment on the pretty flowers and you know this great location and like i'll talk me it could be like in a cul-de-sac with like you know you can't even see the windows that kind of stuff <laughs> and i'm it's just i tell myself that this is going to be great you know and i it's a, a reek of positivity and I feel like that gives me from some really good in interactions with homeowners and stuff like that. So just hard work pays off and persistence through failure is success. So just keep the vision in mind. And if you keep on working hard, you'll get it. There, there's no doubt. Absolutely. Well, you've heard it here folks. first, folks. Uh, we're looking forward to DDD Con January 25th through the 27th. Garrett Cotton, this has been amazing. Thank you for your tips and tricks. 
Hope you guys took some good notes. Uh, thanks for coming on the podcast, my man. We'll see you in January. Awesome. Thank you. Looking forward to it, bro.